Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Power Apps variables. But to be specific, we're going to talk about definitions, uses, and indirect uses of variables. And this is a very important information for you to know because after this, you'll be able to go and investigate your own apps, find those variables that you're never using, and that can speed up the performance of your app. So stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now I've come over here into an app of mine. You can go and pick any of your apps, but I'm just using one for this scenario. The app itself is not the priority. It's what the variables does. That's the whole scope of this video. Now, as you already know, there are two main variables that we'll be focusing on this video, and that is going to be the one tied to a single screen, which is using the update context function. And that other one is the global one using the set function. Global means it's used across all the entire app, across all the screens. Now, if you already don't know this, the way you find the variables is you go to file, which is right here, and you go and click on variables. And this is where you see the two variable types. Now, the one which is global is the one which is tied to the set function, and the one which is the home screen, that's the one which is tied to the update context. And I like the way the update context one is because it goes ahead and shows you that, hey, this is where that screen is. That variable, which was in this case called as the var hs refresh, which is of a Boolean type, was actually generated in or tied only to this home screen. So that's the perks of actually using an update context or at least seeing it over here because you understand that. Now, in addition, when you go and click on it, it tells you these three important things, which is the main focus of this video, is the definitions, the uses, and the indirect uses. Now, what I like is that when I went and looked at that variable, which is, hey, this is the variable name, it is of a uh, Boolean type, and by the way, right now, there is no value tied to it. It's even telling you that. But these are the three important things, is that this definition, like this variable is defined this way. Now, granted for the update context one, we already know that it's tied to a home screen. But even then, if I were to come over here and I would go and click on it, once I click on it, it immediately takes me to that home screen. It directly tells me where that variable is being used. So right there, it even went ahead and selected the property and it shows me, hey, this is where that variable is being used. Now, if I wanted to go back, I got to click on file, I got to click on variables, and then I can click on the home screen and then select that again. So that's basically how I do it for the update context one. And it's the exact same thing for the set variables, which is the global one, but there's a difference. Since it's a global one, it could be used across any of section of the app. So you really don't, right here, you're not able to understand what is the birthplace or where the inception of that variable comes into effect. But all is not lost because I can click on it and then once I click on it, I see that ah, there is a definition this, that's being defined in this very specific navigate section over here. And when I go and click on it, this is where it goes ahead and takes me. So again, it's, it's, you know, it's telling me that it's back in this home screen. But as you know, this is a little different. There is a button and on the buttons on select, which is right here, actually, it's not a button, it's an icon. On the on select of the icon, this is where, you know, uh, gives birth to that variable. So I like the way this is showing over here. But here's the important thing. It's even showing you more information. So check this out. I am not going to come up with a scenario where I actually have this app and it's been used. It's very useful. But when I go and look at it, I actually can find out that, hey, there might be some variables which are not being used. So let's go take a look. So I'm going to come over here to my file back again. I'm going to go to my variables. And in this variables I have in my global section over here, when I scroll around, I just happen to know that there is something called as a uh, bar now. So when I click on the bar now, I'll see that, okay, this is information. It's got the definition. This is great. It's going and telling me that, okay, this is on the apps on start, uh, which is important because now I know where the app on start is, but I can also click on uses. And I see that there is no place this is being used. And if you already have figured this out, if it's not being used directly, it's probably not being used indirectly. But let's go take a look at another scenario because this it'll make more sense if we take a, another one. So if I were to go and grab this picture uh, collection variable, it's showing the definition, which is great. This is where the definition is. But if I go and click on uses, whoa, this is where the entire app is. I mean, that uh, variable is being used. And this is awesome because right off the bat, I know that, hey, this variable is being rev leveraged. So go ahead and don't mess with it. But I can also go and click and see, okay, hey, there are there any indirect uses to that? Well, nothing in this case. 
But indirect uses could be maybe there is another collection or another text or another variable which is going ahead and grabbing its information directly from this place. It's very important for also understanding where all this leverage is. It's almost like a two-step process. It tells you where the variable is being generated, the birthplace of the variable, but it also tells you where indirectly that variable has been used. Very important piece over here. But anyway, I was able to go and click on that. I mean, see the definition. I was able to go ahead and see that ah, this is being used. So let's go back and take a look at that other variable. All right, the variable was way at the bottom, which was over here. I see that it is being generated at the app on start, but what I'm not seeing is nothing in the uses. The uses is blank. Same thing, I mean, if the uses is blank, the indirect uses is also blank. So I'm pretty confident that this one is not being used. And in your scenario, you could have a variable like that where it could be just a clear collect or it could be right in the beginning, it's making some calls or something and it's going and taking in a lot of time and performance of your app, but guess what? It's not being used. So let's go and go and go and find again this place in the app. definition is not the app on start. The name of the variable is var now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So I'll go back now to my app. I go to the app on start. I see it is the var now. So that's where it is, var now. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So I'm a little nervous because I'm going ahead and updating a production app, but I'm pretty confident because it's gone ahead and showed me that, hey, there is no use for it. So now that I've done this, if I go back to my file, if I go to variables, if I go to global variable, you see that var now already disappears. Don't get confused, this is an older one. This is, it was a var now. Now that's because it is a very immediate response. If I went ahead and removed it directly in the studio, I don't have to first run the app and then come back and see, oh, did that take effect? It's almost effective right there. Therefore, I've gone ahead and removed it. Another important thing we've done is I didn't get any errors over here. And that's a very good reaffirmation that, hey, the information that the variable provided in the variable section that there is no direct use over there. There is no indirect use over there. So it was very safe for me to go and delete it because I didn't get any errors over there. Another important tip that that information provides you is that it tells you what type of variable it is. And that you really can't see directly inside the studio. Because I'll give you an example. I've gone ahead and created the screen over here and I'll go ahead and find a variable. And in my variable, let's find this submit var. So I'm gonna come over here I'll go ahead and actually do a on select, all right? Buttons on select. I'll do a set submit bar right there. And I will go ahead and try to give it a now. Right? Whatever is the time right now, I'll go and do that. But it gives me an error over there. And why is this error? Granted, I can go ahead and click on it. It's telling me that we can't evaluate your formula because the context variable types are incompatible. So it, a little bit of hint is good over here. It says it's an incompatible type, but what I don't understand is what type is it? And for that, I can go back and click on file. I can go ahead and click on variables. And in the variables, right here on the submit bar, it is telling me two things. First of all, it's giving me that there's an error going on tied to that app. So when I go and click on it, I can see what that error is, where the error is. But it, if I were to go ahead and now take go back over here and I remove this, all right, go and remove it so there's no error. But if I go back now, and if I go into the variables, and I click over here in the global one, that's where I can see that, oh, the error I was getting is because this was initially built as the Boolean type, and I was just trying to put in some plain text over there. That's when I got the error. Another neat thing over here is that I was able to go and see where the error was being generated. So I could actually click on that, and then over here, I would be able to see the other places, click on it, and go back over there. So hopefully this quick tip video was helpful to you. And as a recap, now you have a way to go ahead and look at the variables and specifically find out in the direct and indirect use whether the variable is being used or not. And now you can confidently go and delete the variable and make sure that you will not have any errors. So hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep power apping. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.